Are you ready? Okay. This is the Monday night, November 25th, 2019 meeting of the Hillsborough Township Board of Education. Um, in accordance with the State Sunshine Law of New Jersey, adequate notice of this meeting of the Hillsborough Township Board of Education was provided on November 21st, 2019 to the Hillsborough Beacon and the Courier News. May I have a roll call, please? Surely. Ms. Eldridge Howard? Here. Mr. Gillette? Here. Dr. Harris? Here. Mrs. Maroon? Here. Mr. Pulsifer? Here. Dr. Sassant? Here. Mrs. Statz? Here. Ms. Trujillo? Here. And Mrs. Haas? Here. We have a quorum. Great. We'll forego the Pledge of Allegiance until we come back out. Right now, I'd like to read a motion to go into executive session, whereas the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of the Laws of 1975, provides that a public body may exclude the public from that portion of a meeting of which the public body discusses certain matters for which confidentiality is required as permitted in Section 7B of the Act. Resolved by the Board of Education of the Township of Hillsborough in the County of Somerset and the State of New Jersey as follows. The matter to be discussed is a personnel slash vendor contract. The matters discussed in the executive session shall be disclosed to the public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. May I have a motion and second, please? Second. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, we'll go into executive session and we'll be back out at 7.30. Okay. All right, everybody. We're ready to begin. Um, okay, so we are back from our executive session. I would like another roll call, please. Surely. Ms. Eldridge Howard? Here. Mr. Gillette? Here. Dr. Harris? Here. Mrs. Maroon? Here. Mr. Pulsifer? Here. Dr. Sassant? Here. Mrs. Statz? Here. Mr. Trujillo? Here. And Mrs. Haas? Here. We have a quorum. Great. Uh, everybody, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Okay, we can start with approval of minutes. Um, first, the executive session minutes of November 11th. May I have a motion and second, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments on the executive minutes? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Good. Um, for the regular minute, uh, for the regular meeting minutes of November 11th, may I have a motion and second, please? So moved. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Um, are there any questions or comments on those minutes? Okay, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Okay. <laughs> uh, we received five pieces of correspondence, which we accept and are grateful for. Um, I have a briefing, um, a board, board president's report. 15 days till the referendum. Uh, our leadership and board members have been actively working uh, to make sure our residents are duly informed about our referendum. Since our board meeting of November 11th, at which all of our professionals presented information, We've gone to the township committee meeting. We've met with HSA presidents. We held a nighttime forum. We met with Senior B. We had met with Senior A the previous week. Uh, we attended meetings and building tours at most of our nine schools. Um, we went to Mary Mother of God Church. We went to Starbucks this morning. And some board members are even uh, present at conferences that are going on in our schools right now. Our communications committee, wonderfully, has um, delivered a flyer to most of the businesses in town, which basically contains our QR code so that anybody seeing this poster anywhere can uh, photograph or click on or whatever it's called, the QR code, and anybody could copy and go directly to all the information that's on our website about the referendum. Uh, next week, starting on Monday night, 
for the public. We're going to be at Hillsborough Middle School on Monday, Amsterdam School on Tuesday. Uh, both of those are at 7 o'clock. Cafe Brio we're going to at 8.30 in the morning. Um, on Wednesday, Orton Road Wednesday night, we're going to be at Moe's in the middle of the afternoon on Thursday and Woodfern Thursday night. And then we have our Board of Ed meeting on December 9th. And on the 10th, we vote, unless you've already voted by mail. Please don't vote twice. You could get arrested for that. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. <laughs> We're not there yet, Greg. But uh, please come out to an event. If you have any questions or comments that you would like to share, check out our website, ask your questions, and please be an informed voter. Um, I also want to report, oh, and I really want to say thank you um, to all the people who have been working so hard. I'm looking at you guys, uh, and you guys, and, you know, everybody on the board has done what they can to participate in all of these efforts, uh, and this one <laughs> uh, created this whole schedule of communication and has been in touch with, you know, a million people throughout the district, and, you know, um, it's just been a wonderful process, so thank you, everybody. Um, I've also attended two other meetings of importance since our last Board of Ed meeting. The first was a joint meeting of the Mercer and Somerset County uh, School Board Associations, at which our district physician, Dr. Bert Mandelbaum, and Princeton Superintendent of Schools, Steve Cochran, presented two parts of the issue of later start times for our high school students. This was an excellent presentation, and I believe that PowerPoints have been shared, if not the uh, filmed presentation, but I'll be able to forward a link of that uh, to everybody within the next day or so. Um, while I don't really want to get into it too deeply tonight, I want everybody to have a chance to look at the material. Um, I'd like everybody to become a little bit more informed so that we could possibly discuss it sometime in December. Um, Several school districts are working on this together. Part of the reason of having Somerset and Mercer is so that if everybody in the same geographical area would participate in this scheduling, you might be able to deal with some of the athletic issues and transportation issues collectively, but that's the hope. We'll see if it works. Um, but uh, the very nice thing about the meeting was that in addition to all the medical and social emotional uh, benefits of later start times that was presented, we heard from a district that has actually been working on this for several years. Um, Princeton has spent several years surveying their students, planning, communicating with their stakeholders, and taking some small steps and some large ones and they've come to their place where their district is wondering why they didn't do it sooner. Uh, of course, Princeton's also not 54, 54 square miles, and their population, I think, is about half of ours. So, you know, different, different issues, but their experience and advice in terms of specific things that could happen and specific things that they didn't anticipate was really valuable and I'm happy to share my notes. Um, on the medical side, it's a kind of stunning statistic that pediatric behavioral, behavioral visits to uh, the Princeton ER were tracked at 153 in 2009, uh, 288 in 2015, and 500 in 2018. That is a scary statistic and it's not that emergency room visits have grown. It's within the same universe. Those kinds of issues are becoming way more prevalent. So, uh, you know, this is one way that people are approaching it. But on the implementation side, they basically said you start off with your values and you collect your data. They did a very wide survey of all the student population. Um, they formed a committee. They dealt with transportation, childcare, and athletics, which were the assumed uh, issues that would be very difficult. And they collaborated with a number of partners. They constantly communicated. 
They anticipated unknowns, and the funny, the funny thing that they didn't anticipate that happened to them was traffic. You know, when you have everybody coming to school at, you know, a later time in the middle of rush hour in Princeton, there were some, some impacts there. And, uh, but at this point, they've gotten through it. They're in the process of evaluating impacts and uh, resurveying their people. But I know that Lisa and Karen Bingert and Mike Davis. Davis will be attending the next meeting of the Somerset County Group because they want to meet with superintendents, athletic directors, and high school principals as a next step. And unfortunately, we missed the meeting for superintendents and board presidents that took place during the transition between Jordan and Lisa, and there was a, a you know, whatever. We didn't get to it. So be that all as it may, um, I think that's mid-December. Yes. And, you know, when Lisa comes back with that information, we can, you know, continue that discussion or before that, but let's see how that goes. Um, I also attended the Garden State Coalition of Schools meeting last Wednesday night. It was held in Metuchen because they try to circulate and have some meetings in East Brunswick, which is their headquarters, but some in other towns. And Senator Pat Degnan was there. He was a guest speaker, and he is a member of the Senate Budget and Appropriations Committee and the Joint Committee on Public Schools. And he delivered the good news that state revenues are up. Hopefully there'll be some for us. And um, there might be some progress during the lame duck session on the path to progress uh, recommendation on state aid funding. And uh, we had a very good discussion, um, including updates that are being considered right now to the anti-bullying law. And uh, we we're also asked for input on that, as well as mental health issues lunch shaming, which seems to be a big issue now throughout the state, which is horrible. And uh, of course, I brought up pilots, the funding formula, and wealth calculations. <laughs> and we had a good discussion. I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen during the lame duck. I saw in the newspaper that Steve Sweeney was at the delegate assembly saying that we could possibly uh, be able to exceed the cap by 2%. Uh, exceed the 2% gap by the amount of money cut, whereas the resolution was more open-ended. Correct? Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, till we see legislation, till it's passed, till it's signed by the governor, I'm not going to get my hopes up, but it's nice to know that things are moving in a better direction for us, potentially. Um, so that was... Um, that's my report. So, do I really have to read this? Ah. Okay. <laughs> you have to read this every time? Three more times. Okay. Two more times. Or one time. Or one time. Let me have the drink of water ready. Okay. Uh, one more time on the ballot, ref uh, the ballot question on the referendum. <coughs> Explanatory statement. The projects, in order to ensure a safe, healthy, and secure learning environment and provide for facilities infrastructure needs, the board is seeking to undertake district-wide facility improvements, including, as applicable, heating and ventilation replacement, <coughs> electrical upgrades and emergency lighting system replacement, masonry improvements, stucco improvements, interior renovation and finishes replacement, roof replacement, asphalt repaving, sidewalk and curbing replacement, air conditioning in certain areas which are currently not air conditioned, upgrade of security at all schools including secure entry and security vestibule improvements at an aggregate cost not to exceed $35,416,740. The board anticipates financing the projects over a 20-year period. State funding for the projects. The state has agreed to contribute just over $14 million towards the cost of the $35.4 million project. All of the costs of the projects all costs of the projects are available for the highest level of state funding. The state funding will be in the form of debt service aid. The state funding is only available if this proposal is approved. And here's the proposal. The Board of Education in the Township of Hillsborough and the County of Somerset, New Jersey is hereby authorized to 
A, undertake a school facilities project consisting of district-wide facility improvements, including, as applicable, heating and ventilation replacement, electrical upgrades and emergency lighting system replacement, masonry improvement, stucco improvements, interior renovation and finishes replacement, roof replacement, asphalt repaving, sidewalk and curbing replacement, air conditioning in certain areas which are currently not air conditioned, upgrades of security at all schools, including secure entry and security vestibule improvements, and B, <laughs> expend and issue school bonds in an amount of $35,416,740 um, on such projects. The state has agreed to provide debt service aid in the amount of 40% of the final eligible costs, in quotes, of the school facilities project. All of the project costs are final eligible costs. The local share of the projects may be transferred amongst the projects. So, please don't forget to vote your mail-in ballots if you have them. You still have time. And otherwise, vote on December 10th on this very important um, referendum to the ability of our kids to learn in an acceptable, healthy, safe, secure environment. I'm done. All yours. <laughs> Thank you. So I and several others here have had the pleasure of attending a performance of It's a Wonderful Life radio show performed by our, I have the playbill, performed by our Hillsborough High School theater students. Twelve students played multiple role, roles and included comic relief with singing commercials paid for by local businesses, which was fantastic. Great job to everyone who made it a successful show. Students in our independent living class launched Burrow Brew. Coffee, tea, and snacks can be pre-ordered and students in the class process the orders, practice communication skills, and work with money counting. Thank you to family and consumer sciences teachers Jessica Haygood and Jill Kellyanker for their hard work. Seven members from the Hillsborough High School Wind Ensemble students attended the TCNJ Wind Ensemble Festival. Congratulations to Sarah Liu, Caitlin Ma, Haley Crino, George Hart, Evan Obenauer, uh, Andrew Rigel and Jake Smith. Art departments in the district are participating in the Memory Project. Students at Woods Road School are working with art teacher Samantha Banker and preparing artwork to send to students in Pakistan. Students in Pakistan will then exchange artwork with our students. Hillsborough High School students had their first Honors Art Society meeting with teacher Lauren Kadish. Over 40 students filled the room. Ten students will receive pictures of orphans in Malaysia and draw portraits of them. The other students will participate in fundraising to assist with the shipping and to support the memory project. Thank you to the teachers and students participating in this exciting project. Middle school band director Nancy Ciccarelli and her symphonic band students Skyped with composer Dr. Scott Wilson as they prepared one of their pieces for the winter concert. Students recorded a previous rehearsal so Dr. Watson could provide feedback. They took notes on his suggestions and played sections of the piece for him. Special thanks to Mrs. Ciccarelli and Tech Ed Specialist Mary Ellen Wilson who helped with the Skype connection. As the fall athletic season comes to a close, I'd like to share that our boys soccer team was the Skyland Conference champions and the gymnastics team was the Skyland Conference champions, Somerset County champions and NJSIAA sectional champions. As all of the teams wrap up their seasons, I look forward to sharing more highlights. Finally, I would like to wish everyone an enjoyable Thanksgiving, enjoyable and relaxing Thanksgiving with family, friends, and those that you love. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in case anybody notices that our acting superintendent doesn't have a voice, <laughs> it's because she's been out every single night and a lot of the weekends um, working on referendum um, communication. So consequences. <laughs> Hopefully you'll be able to take off Thanksgiving. That would be nice. Okay, so we're moving right along to committee reports. Greg? Thank you. Um, Operations Committee met November 13th. We had a few items on the agenda that I'm going to report to you tonight. Uh, the, first, um, the first was um, what you may recall me, um, that I reported er before about Alyssa's law. It's the law that says you have to have a panic button in every school uh, for an emergency. Um, this is an unfunded mandate, but it's not too bad. 
Uh, it's going to cost us uh, about $20,000, and we're um, ex to accept the proposal from Fire and, Secur Fire and Security Technologies. That's the company that's going to um, install the panic buttons in the schools for us. Okay. Um, also, we looked at our a revision to our uh, integrated pest management policy, and the revision, um, the revision uh, mandates uh, that we, um, I guess, appoint an integrated pest management coordinator, and we're going to do that. Uh, that's I think that's on the agenda for tonight. It is. it is, and it's going to be Tony DeLuca. Who unfortunately, couldn't make it tonight. <laughs> Because and there's was, a title for your resume. <laughs> he, was bit, he was bit by an insect tonight. He couldn't make the meeting. I'm not joking. But that's okay. He's going to be... A, he's, he's a, he's a, he's, he'll be okay, right? He'll be okay. He'll be okay. Yeah. Yes, he is right. Uh, so uh, we're going to appoint him tonight. Um, I don't know if he was bit by an insect. I don't know. I just made that up. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so also um, we're going to um, add a maintenance mechanic job description. This is not going to be hiring a new person. Correct? Correct. It's just going to be um, changing a, a description of one of our employees so that they can uh, work with some of our um, vehicles really? as, as a mechanic. Yeah. That, was neat. that was an easy one, actually. Um, all right, so that's that. Oh, then we had a long discussion about um, the transportation situation in the district. So transportation situation... Um, we had some, we've had some complaints and some ongoing problems with, our, um, with some of our bus routes. Uh, this, look, it stems from um, the bus companies that we use do not have the reliable employees all the time. Uh, drivers are in short supply in New Jersey. Um, several years ago, um, requirements were changed, made more strict, which we like, uh, but it, it drove down the number of people going into that field. Uh, but this is something that we're not going to um, we're not going we're not going to live with this with with kids being half hour late or more late to school uh, multiple times. Uh, I know Mr. mahmoud has been working on it with uh, Ms. Bennett, who's who's here tonight, and um, they come up with a solution. There are three problematic routes, and uh, what we can do to uh, relieve this is um, buy three buses. This is like a lease purchase, which we've done before. I believe we currently have five full-size buses. We do. Uh, 54, what we call 54 passenger bus. Yeah. This would be adding three. There so happens that there are three available. Very hard to get a bus in the middle of the school year with on short notice. But somebody had some, I guess, maybe that were. And look, they build these to order, basically. That's, they don't keep them around in stock. It's not like there's not a lot on Route 22 Correct. behind Clinton Honda with some buses. <laughs> they, they take orders and they build them usually after wait. But sometimes yes. somebody orders and doesn't take them all yes. or something like that. So yes. they, have, they have some remainders sometimes. So we have this lease purchase. It's actually going to, I would call it break even. Our analysis shows that it would be actually running three bus routes and taking over the three. Uh, transportation routes that are contracted would actually save us about $3,000. That's not a lot when you're talking about um, $122,000 for our cost, and all in, including the buses, the, yes. uh, the 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 the, the uh, fuel, the employees, uh, everything, all in. Um, but the important thing is not to try to save $3,000. The important thing is that kids get to school on time. And I might also add in something I mentioned at the meeting. I think that I feel that. Once in a while, leasing a bus or two or three helps keep the, in my opinion now, not the committee's opinion, in my opinion, it helps keep the uh, contractors honest because they know if we did it now, we could do it again. We could add another to another year. Helps keep them honest in when it comes time to rebid the contracts. Um, some things like athletic routes are very expensive, but now if we've got some buses available, we can run some of those athletic routes if they bid too high. Uh, and so the, it kind of keeps them honest yeah. uh, in their bidding. So I like the idea. Um, now, so Mr. Mahmoud and uh, Can Ms. I Bennett just ask on one question yeah. about that? Yeah. Was this a triple tiered route? Or are well, we, we just we, doing one leg? Or was this a singular route? Double, 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 double tier. This was double. Two, okay. Double tier. Okay. No, his tier says first tier. Three double tiers. Three double tiers. There's three, there's three routes. And each of them is a double. So that means they visit two schools in the morning, two schools in the afternoon, each okay. of them. Um, I mean, maybe with traffic, we just can't do triple-tier routes anymore. 
Well, this was only a double. It wasn't really that. Right. That was the way it was originally bid. Yeah. That wasn't really that. Was the issue was the right. traffic. It was that they just um, they didn't have, they didn't have yeah they didn't have drivers to cover it. Okay. They were having. I mean, look, they were doing what they could. They were having drivers come from completely different routes, doing their route, and right. then going back and pick up kids from another route. But that's thirty to forty minutes or more behind. You, right. You can't, and they're not familiar. Well, I mean, they became familiar because yeah. it was happening too often. Yeah. <laughs> but right, Lisa's not in your head. It was happening almost every day. For us. So we're going to fix that. So I don't see anyone here from the public to speak about that tonight, I don't think. But um, we have heard you, public parents, about this, and we're going to do something to fix it. Um, tough to get substitute custodians in the district. Um, we wind up then having to pay uh, very expensive <coughs> overtime. And also, that's um, also people don't always want overtime. Sometimes they want to go home. So uh, that's a consideration also. So we pay now, I think, um, $13 per hour yeah. or, uh, for substitute students. Our recommendation is to increase that to $15 an hour. Yep. This will be now significantly higher than surrounding districts Sorry. by a good amount, by more than a dollar. Um, so for instance, uh, the districts around us pay about between 11 to 14 for the substitutes. So we're going to go all the way up to 15. So we're going to be $4 more than uh, some of them. So we'll be able to get those daily um, custodian substitutes when we need them. Okay, so we're doing that. Um, Mr. Moon moving over the budget calendar with us. You know how that goes. But they're working on it now. We'll work on it later. And uh, at the end of March, beginning of April, we'll get some uh, tentative budget going. And then, uh, in for, like first week in May, we'll pass the budget, something like that. All right. So that's that's in, in a nutshell. Um, also, we talked about the update on the work that done behind the middle school. Uh, the fascia was uh, failing. We had that same problem on different parts of the middle school in years past. It's all 100% complete done. Um, playground at uh, Hillsborough Elementary School is not quite ready to open yet. Uh, we're going to make sure that um, our uh, Architects' plans are um, are certified, so it's ready to go, sort of. But the the plans have to be officially certified before the building department will accept them. Yep. Uh, so that's probably already done. That's what I'm speaking. Um, let's see. Oh, and then finally, and this will be the last thing I'll talk about. Because I'm going way over time. Ashley's here, like poking me. Um, every three years, we we uh, we ask for proposals or bids or whatever, however it works, for some of our professionals uh, so that they're on sort of a three-year cycle. Now, the professionals are appointed every single year, but we only take a deep dive, I like to do that, deep dive look in every three years. Now, that just keeps, make sure that we're, every once in a while, we're, 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 we're taking a closer look at the professionals. So up this year is the architect, the uh, attorney, and the environmental consultant. Uh, so those are three heavy, those are three tough, why are they all in the same year, Hyman? Uh, it's just the way the cycle is, Mr. Gillette. We uh, just because these, the are, these are important, these are important yeah, they ones. Are. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, so, uh, so these are three, and so what, what, what we'll do is, uh, Mr. Maroon's gonna get some RFPs, yeah. request for, uh, well, or RFQs. RFQs, request for a qualification uh, from these, um, and from some new ones, and we'll take a look and see if we wanna change. Yep. Any of these, and we'll get recommendations from our um, administration. That's it. Can I ask a question? Could you just give a clarification on the Hillsborough Elementary School again? I <coughs> said it so quickly. I yeah, I'm not. sorry. So this is an issue that we had with their with the playground. Um, the playground was installed and ready to go, but the um, th it has to have an architect plan because it's on um, it's it's installed on like uh, I guess concrete like footings or something so it's a permanent you know it's a permanent install it's a permanent installation so um, uh, what the building department needed was not just a like um, like a, a contractor's plan they need a certified architect plan I'm just paraphrasing it. I know we have an architect here but th that's pretty good right so they, they couldn't just go with the contractors you know plan that they with, with that they marked up and they yeah. did they need something certified from our architect so it had to go back to our architect, and that's a lot of, you know, it's, it's some work. Um, so we had to delay the grand opening for that. Um, but I think it might already be done almost, probably. Yeah, yeah go ahead. We have, we have one of our architects here today. Hello, James Hunter, EI Associates. In regards to the uh, playground, 
Uh, I've been in touch with uh, Tony. What we need is the AutoCAD drawings of the uh, playground equipment, which uh, we're trying to uh, uh, obtain. Once we have that, we place those on our drawing backgrounds, and we can sign and submit those to the building department for the permit approval. So any work that might be done have to be done uh, in terms of the building department inspecting, they'll have the signed and sealed documents in which to start their approval process. So we are working on that. We're not quite there yet. We have to get a couple of bits and pieces of information from the company that has uh, put together the uh, drawings, initial drawings for the playground equipment, but we are on our way. Okay. Sounds easy, actually. Sounds, sounds like it's nothing really out of the ordinary. That, yeah. Compared to like buying three buses and kids being late to school, this is an easy one. Oh, do, do we actually have a timetable? It should happen quickly, but we do need uh, the drawings in the AutoCAD format. But I, again, I'm working with Tony to obtain that. Once we get that, it's probably a week, 10 days to uh, have the drawings ready to be submitted to the billing department. Okay. So it's, it's incremental. We just need that first uh, batch of information and then we'll proceed. Okay, okay, thank you. Before, you excuse me, before you go, I have a question. Um, so a lot of times these um, AutoCAD drawings are proprietary. Is there an issue with the um, playground manufacturer not wanting to share that with you? I would think not. We've dealt with this company in the past. It's just a matter of getting the drawings perhaps through the installer. So I know that I've been speaking with Tony about getting that, and he, he just hasn't been able to obtain that through the installer at this time. But he is pushing toward to get those drawings. Okay, um, Lorraine, uh, Education Committee report. Yeah, thank you. Um, the Education Committee met on November 18th uh, with all members present and we discussed several items. The first was the 2020-2021 calendar um, <laughs> and uh, submitted that to the um, the two union reps for review and I believe that's coming back to the Education Committee with some comments. So we'll hope to get that on a board agenda in December. Um, we also reviewed the 2019-2020 Nursing Services Plan um, and that was submitted tonight on, uh, with unanimous recommendation from the committee. Uh, we uh, also unanimously recommend some course title changes for the REACH senior internship. There was some confusion there that you had to be in REACH previously to be eligible. It's now going to be named Senior Outreach Internship. <coughs> and the, the previous course that was the preschool child is now being titled Education and Training. Um, we reviewed some fine and performing arts curriculum revisions. They are also recommended for approval this evening. We discussed <clears throat> the, uh, the issue of textbook disposals. We were told that the board could not sell them. We could donate them, however. So several committee members are looking into um, organizations that would take a whole lot of books. We don't have personnel who could do one-offs, one but um, the committee committed to looking to, uh, for organizations that we could, um, at no cost to the district, donate the books. <coughs> we discussed a proposal for an HMS uh, ski club uh, and, and trip there, and um, I think that is all we discussed. So, thank you. Okay. Oh, Any questions or Actually, comments? I have two, oh. two, two things. So first of all, coming from the President's report, we did discuss um, two agenda <laughs> items for upcoming um, discussion, and that's the, the remaining calendar, the 2021 20, calendar, uh, and future calendars, uh, just in, ter in terms of getting a start about priorities for the committee, and also the um, late start for the um, high school and the committee requested that presentation to be in January. So I would suggest that board discussion not happen until after the committee has the opportunity to review those materials. Obviously, those materials would be shared with the rest of the, uh, the board for future discussion. Yeah. Um, it's likely that it would take us at least one calendar year, one school year, to get all of the necessary community uh, discussions in place and everything. So the earliest <coughs> that we envision that would take place would be um, 20, uh, September 2021. 
Um, but again, we want to have full open community discussion, make sure that we are in line with what our uh, other districts in Somerset County are doing so that when we start trying to schedule after school activities and things like that, that we're not <coughs> running up against difficulty there. So. Definitely. I have, I have a question on that. Yes. Sure. On the uh, school day. Um, so any discussion in any of these fabulous meetings about a shorter high school day? To achieve that through a shorter high school day? No, in fact, I believe Bridgewater discussed lengthening the day to give kids more downtime during the, the school mm. day. I was trying to help Ms. Bennett would be <laughs> helped by a shorter high school day. We can't do, it's tough to do tiers on the schools when some schools go for six and a half hours and one school goes for seven hours. That's, uh, that it's one part of the day, it's okay. The, the other part of the day, how do you tear with that? It's difficult. So well, yeah. those are exactly the kinds of issues that have to come forward. And well, I just solved it. Take time. Well, I just solved to it. The high school day, thirty minutes shorter. Well, where? What would you cut out of the high school day? Uh -huh. Not much. Lunch. Passing time. Passing time. No well, pass. The problem is that we need five lunches. Well, you, you can go to school eighty minutes, and you can go to class for eighty minutes every other day. You cut a lot of passing time. Well. In order to, I'm not going to solve the whole no, no, thing no. right now, but I well, think I've given you, I've given I mean, you the roadmap to solving it. Greg, as you recall, and I know you're in fine form this evening, so I appreciate it because I, I, I come here for entertainment. Um, but we, we discussed a lot well, of. There's only issues. one genius on this board, so I'm sharing it with you tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. You're welcome. So, what I was going to say is, during there's the some ten geniuses on the board. Oh my, okay. Um, I'm going to ignore those comments and I'm going to say that during the strategic planning process, um, we discussed options for, for, um, for, the, for block scheduling and, um, and for other options that would decrease passing time and things like that. And again, with the restrictions in our high school for needing five lunches to feed all of our kids, we, we run into difficulty. But I do think that as we progress with these discussions, um, we're going to need to talk about switching maybe all of the elementary schools to the early schedule, um, and then reevaluating when the other when the other schools start. Maybe have the middle school and the high school start within 20 minutes of each other, and then Otten Road would, would either go earlier or later, depending on what the committee uh, what the uh, community discussions uh, take place. So it seems like you've got it all figured out. I do not. I am open to hearing from the community. I spent, uh, I didn't, I was unable to attend the, the meeting, um, but I did watch on the Bridgewater um, yes. school district site, they had a whole community meeting um, and they had people participating both in the room and then at home <coughs> chatting in. And so I, d I did spend some time uh, watching that and listening to that. Um, you know, from the comfort of my home office. Um, and there are a lot of issues that we're gonna need to, uh, to discuss within, within the community um, and make sure that we do everything we can to avoid difficulties uh, if we decide to eventually Im implement this. So I think we need to, you know, continue to, to start the discussion, continue the discussion, have our uh, administrative team really do the research and discuss with their counterparts in other uh, school districts to be able to um, to take this on effectively. So, thank you. I mean, those, those resources are available on Bridgewater's um, website under school schedules. Yeah. Um, and it's really good stuff. You can obviously take your time looking at it, but they had a whole community forum with all the same people who are leading this, you know, project for the county. And uh, now, as I said, they've branched out into Mercer County. They'll probably head out to Hunterdon. There are a lot of people who are very motivated to get this done on a wide basis. Um, and again, the more people that do it, the more <coughs> we'll be able to learn from their experiences. So, yes, Jane. I just have a question about the uh, donation of the te textbooks. Was it considered that maybe uh, uh, Hillsborough residents might uh, have access to be able to take any of those textbooks? We, we did discuss that. Again, the problem is 
staff time, but um, and and another uh, issue which is that you want to make sure that the people uh, that there isn't additional stresses put on our students by say. Um, you know, a parent who might get a calculus book and want to teach their kindergarten or calculus as an extreme, uh, as an extreme point. Uh, I suggested that we set a day um, with the administration's help and come up with a list of books, send it out to the community, and I would donate my time to stand there and hand them out so that it didn't take staff time. Uh, but all of that still needs to be worked out. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, while our professionals are here, if anybody on the board has any further questions about the referendum, um, this would this would be a good time, and we have our transportation supervisor here. Um, do you have a question? In? Oh, okay. I thought you gave it last time. I'm sorry. I just wanted to update it. Okay. The um, communications committee, as a result of their action agenda <coughs> item, was out last week putting flyers that look like this in store businesses and um, asking all of the business <coughs> owners in town if they would be willing to do that. Of the 130 businesses we visited, 85 of those stores immediately put them in windows or bulletin boards in their stores. 35 had to check because their managers weren't there or something of that nature and they had to double check before they could post. 10 of those were corporate businesses that were not allowed to because of their policies. We understand that. But we do want to extend a big thanks to all of the businesses in town who did cooperate and put those in their windows. And we are hoping, as a committee, that we have met the, the transparency part of uh, communications. I would like to thank Mrs. Stotts, Ms. Trigillo, Ms. Maroon, Ms. Mrs. Maroon, and uh, there, there uh, definitely that was an action agenda where we had some legwork to do. So um, all of those businesses will be receiving thank yous. So we have kept track of all of them. And I could finish my report by reading all of these, but it's three pages long. So I will spare the community that right now and just say thank you for your support. Hopefully people who are going to these stores and centers will use the QR code that is here and it will download to your phone and then at your leisure you may look at all of the information on our district website. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. I thought, again, I, I said it before, but I think it's awesome that you guys just went out and did that. Um, it was super and the numbers are incredible that you know a handful of people hit 130 different places and whether they posted it or not at least you made them aware yes and i just want to emphasize uh, i want to thank dr harris herself for all the legwork that you did and the organization and everything behind it and then we almost rewarded you with a meeting on friday <laughs> it, it goes along with the territory but thank you Okay. Um, I had a question for Mary Lyons, um, who is our financial advisor, which was actually asked to me by a member of the public. Um, can you speak at all about our district's bond rating? Yes. The district is currently rated a double A, which is a very good rating. Um, the township is a double A plus, and I think the question was, why aren't we a triple A? It's really difficult to get a triple A as a school district in New Jersey. There may be a handful of them. Princeton, the Chathams. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the underlying demographics. Um, and as a school district, you're also up against some constraints that municipalities don't necessarily have. One is that 
2% excess surplus. That's all you're allowed to carry. And the rating agencies look at New Jersey school districts in comparison with school districts all across the country to make that rating universal. And they, a lot, I think the average is 20% uh, fund balance that school districts across the country are allowed to carry. So you can see the difference. There are some advantages, a few, to being a school district in New Jersey, uh, one of which is you are fairly restricted in a lot of the financial transactions and transfers that you make, and, and the rating agencies do view that as a positive. But I, I think the AA is, is really a solid uh, rating. Hopefully, we'll keep that. They're, the rating agencies are very concerned about the state aid issue. They're very aware of that. But oftentimes, a district's rating will mirror very closely the municipal rating, although it'll probably be a notch lower, which is the case for Hillsborough. OK. Thank okay. you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions for Mary? OK. <coughs> Thank you again. Um, and now we go to public comment. So um, first, we'll take public input on the 2020-2021 uh, budget. Good evening, Bob Fenster, Hillsborough High School. I wasn't planning on speaking, but uh, this past weekend, I spent some time in the uh, high school auditorium. And uh, for the last several years, actually last decade, I would say we've been more or less taping it together with duct tape and there's been there's no budget line that goes directly to the auditorium uh, this past week our sound system uh, suddenly stopped working we have no idea whether that's a uh, a sound person who was hired by the uh, drama people came in and looked at it and he said he thinks it's on its last legs the lighting that we have is basically 1980s 1990s lighting uh, we have no replacement light bulbs at this point, or lamps they're called. Um, every year I uh, speak to, my, to, the, to the principal to ask her to squeeze out a little bit of money to cover that, and every year of course it gets, her budget's smaller and it gets more and more difficult. With the referendum, of course, everybody was hoping that would pass and then this would be somebody else's problem or a different school's problem, but obviously that didn't happen. And so we've pushed this off for so long I hope that the Board of Education will consider some kind of uh, outlay for updating to maybe the year 2000 for the uh, equipment in the, in the auditorium. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I would actually like to comment on that because I have been at at concerts and various student performances where there have been failures of the lighting system as well as the sound system. And among all of the things that go on in our auditorium, I think we really owe it to the kids who work so hard on their pre presentations to get that done. So um, I hope we can make that a priority in the next budget process. Sure. If I could just tack on the uh, over the I, I, if you didn't know that the uh, the musical over the years for at least a decade has actually rented equipment every year for both lighting and sound because the house system doesn't work. So a significant part of the money that they bring in, I mean, they historically have sold 500 or so seats and or multiple shows, so thousands and thousands of dollars. But a big part of their budget actually just goes right out the window to pay for that. So. I, occurred to me as I was walking by. <laughs> thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Hi, Alicia Gabriel Bayless Huffling. Um, so I was wondering, because this is for the budget, uh, I feel like maybe the public doesn't understand where we are stand. Um, given the, the layoffs that we had and the referendum, referendum that didn't pass um, earlier in the year. And just for coming up, um, if, if there's a way to help to educate the public on where we stand with um, losing more in state aid, that might be good because I know that you'll be wanting to hear more from the public on um, what should you prioritize. Um, that I think knowing 
those kind of details would help people understand how things are going on. Um, I also, just with a referendum, or is this just for budget? Your referendum. Is this public talk? Just for public or, or for the budget? Okay, sure. Um, I don't know if you've been able to reach out to the daycares, but I don't believe that I heard through our daycare um, about the referendum. So um, I, I think that was one thing that you were thinking about doing. I don't know if you've gotten to do that. Um, and then also just a, a, a note that if by chance you don't have a quorum on December 9th, which I believe is your next board meeting, if you could still just hold an open meeting so that people who got their ballot, um, you know, just in case everyone gets sick, maybe whoever is not sick or, you know, if, if it happens that way, um, you could still have an, an, a meeting so that if anyone wanted to ask questions, they could because the election is the next day. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Um, Everybody will not be sick. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. All right. Is there any uh, public input on the action agenda? <coughs> Seeing none, um, we can roll. If you have your voice. <laughs> yes. The superintendent recommends that the Board of Education approve the action agenda 11.1 to 11.8 as follows. Motion to approve professional travel related expenses. Affirm the superintendent's HIB determination. Motion to approve the 1920s nursing services plan. Motion to approve revised curriculum and course name changes. Motion to approve an overnight field trip. Motion to approve the disposal of visual and performing arts and related areas textbooks. They're very old, these that are on here. Approve revisions to policy and regulation for first readings. That's it. Okay. Um, may I have a motion and second for items 11.1 .1 through 11.8? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Ann. Uh, any comments or questions on any of these? Yes. Could we separate 11.7? 11, 11 11.7? 7? Yes, please. Sure. Okay. Any other separations or comments? Okay, so I will take a vote on 11.1 through 11.6 plus 11.8. Truly. Ms. Eldridge Howard? Yes. Mr. Gillette? Yes. Dr. Harris? Yes. Ms. Maroon? Yes. Mr. Pulsifer? Yes. Dr. Sassant? Yes. Mrs. Statz? Yes. Ms. Trujillo? Yes. And Mrs. Haas? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, I'll take a motion and second for item, item number 11.7. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, any comment? I guess along the same lines as uh, when we talked about disposing of other books, if we can uh, consider using uh, other considerations to uh, make them available to the public and or donations elsewhere. Do you want to address? For these specifically, the reason why... Well, I, I acknowledge some of them are, are, are probably out of date or even obsolete, but there might be some people that might be still be interested in them. Okay, so uh, the reason why the, the committee decided to go is that some of them are completely out of code, like wiring and things like that. We would never want somebody to wire a house based upon a 1989 book or things like that. Yes, so. certainly, definitely things like that, but maybe <laughs> the woodworking ones, I don't know. <coughs> so do, you, do you also have a space issue? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, are there any other comments about that? You look like you're going to say something. So. Well, I just think that um, they're so outdated that um, anyone who's interested in really doing any carpentry or plumbing or wiring would go online and be able to find a way to do that without having to use an outdated textbook, which may be frustrating. Can I at least say, can we, especially because it's because of woodworking, can we table this? <laughs> <laughs> only, if the only if the table has nine tiles on it and a wrought iron bottom. Um, yes, but uh, I find it very interesting. I mean, and, you know, you're you're doing QR codes, now you're going online to find out how to do wiring. Cool. <laughs> I, have, I have to get up with the times, you know? Absolutely. 
Um, so I have a comment. So to Mrs. Statz's point, um, and, and to the point about these books, some of these books being older and out of code, but for example, like Stenoscript and Graphic Arts, those two just popped out. I don't think that they, they would have codes. And I think they would kind of be interesting for people. Like for example, with the Graphic Arts, I'd s seen some presentations at Workshop that were kind of cool, and I have no idea how they're made. Graphic Arts book might be kind of, you know, like a, a good place for people to start where they don't know. And also for Sten Stenoscript, like, you know, when people take notes, it's... Um, and Mrs. Shaughnessy indicated no one even does that anymore. That's what she had said to the there's committee. There's like a little Stenoscript, there's a, there's a typewriter. I don't know. Okay. Um, are we ready for a vote? Okay. Roll call. Ms. Eldridge Howard? Yes. Mrs. Gillette? Yes. Dr. Harris? Yes. Mrs. Maroon? Yes. Mr. Pulsifer? Yes. Dr. Sasson? Yes. Mrs. Statz? No. Mrs. Trujillo? No. And Mrs. Haas? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Um, human resources? Yes. The superintendent recommends that the Board of Education approve the human resources agenda 12.1 to 1210 as follows. Motion to approve a resolution to create a maintenance worker mechanic position. Motion to approve retirements and resignations. Motion to approve contract changes. Motion to approve revised co-curricular advisor contracts and revised leave of absences. Motion to approve leaves of absence. Motion to approve appointments. Motion to approve mentors and to pre-approve extra coverage. Motion to approve extra coverage. Okay, I'll take a motion and second for item uh, items 12.1 through 12.10, please. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any comments, questions, or separations in the HR agenda? Okay. Um, seeing none. Roll. Okay, Ms. Eldridge Howard. Yes. Mr. Gillette? Yes. Dr. Harris? Yes. Mrs. Maroon? Yes. Mr. Pulsifer? Yes. Dr. Sasson? Yes. Mrs. Stats? Yes. Mr. Heal? Yes. And Mrs. Hoff? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. The superintendent recommends that the Board of Education approve the operation agenda 13.1 to 13.4 as follows. Motion to approve the monthly financial statements. Motion to approve monthly bills. To approve policy 74-22, school integrated pest management plan and motion to accept donations is listed. Okay. And in regard to our donations, we have uh, quite a few uh, photography yeah. um, equipment pieces from Bruce Pokras. Yeah. And the Hillsborough Rotary Club is donating 576 dictionaries for third grade, which is a long-standing tradition on their part. And we thank both of our donors for their gracious donations to our district. Um, anyway, with that said, I will take a motion and second for items 13.1 through 13.4. So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Uh, just a logistics question, I guess. What do we do with 576 dictionaries? Because I know there's more than is that every is that every third grader? They I do we were the higher third grade. It's every right, but I thought we had more third grade students than that. Do we not this it's year? About six hundred, five five fifty to six hundred each grade. Well, maybe they had okay, some so they, left so over from okay. last year. I, I thought our third grade was higher than that. That's why I was wondering how we yeah. <laughs> how we left, left some kids out. The numbers go up and down, and it makes absolutely no sense. But you know, that's the donation. So, um, any other? Comments or questions? I understand the bill list was reviewed. Oh, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for that. Oh, Mrs. Uh, Stotts um, came in on Friday and reviewed the bill list. Oh. Yeah. We spent like two hours on it. Well, we discussed several issues, yeah. Yeah. That's seventeen fifty for every six minutes was killing us. <laughs> yeah, really? Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, seeing no other issues, roll call, please. Sure. Mitch Eldridge Howard? Yes. Mr. Gillette? Yes. Dr. Harris? Yes. Mrs. Maroon? Yes. Mr. Pulsifer? Yes. Dr. Swisson? Yes. Mrs. Stats? Yes. Mr. Trujillo? Yes. Mrs. Haas? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. In our informational uh, section, we have an HIV review and a suspension report. Um, with that, I'll take comments from the board or public on any old business. Um, so I'd like to report on Delegate Assembly from Saturday. 
I sent everybody um, a summary of it. It was very exciting. Um, our resolution was overwhelmingly approved. We split it into two questions. Um, the first was to add language, additional policy language to the NJSBA manual of positions and policies, and I'll just read it real quick. Um, NJSBA believes that in instances where districts cannot meet their local share per the state funding formula, those districts may be allowed to exceed statutory levy caps to meet the local share. What was really interesting was after this portion of the delegate assembly was over, Steve Sweeney came, Senate President came, and the first thing he said was, I am immediately going to be introducing legislation to allow districts that have lost state aid to go above their 2% cap, tax cap, which is what the original proposal that I brought to the operations committee said. So that was kind of cool. The second thing that he said was that he, he envisioned the um, school funding formula as a living document so that it would be reviewed um, every, and he just picked a number, he said every five years or so. Um, and then with that he took questions. So actually let me go back a step. So then the second part of our resolution, which was that um, we were looking for a rolling average of wealth calculation, the resolution subcommittee had recommended that it get referred to the finance committee for further study. And so that was a second question and that also overwhelmingly passed. Um, so I'm actually on the school finance committee, so at our December meeting we will be talking about um, what the formula looks like and just basically not just looking at Hillsborough but all districts um, and kind of trying to get a, a, get an, um, a representation from the different school districts around the, the state. So then um, when Steve Sweeney opened the floor to questions, you know, I thanked him for what he said, but then I also asked him regarding our transportation bus driver shortage. And I, and I started by saying it's a student achievement issue because buses are late. And so he indicated that he would, his office would be open to if we had suggestions. Because one of the things that I had talked about, and I'm not an expert in it, I just kind of asked him on the fly, was with respect to the licensing requirements in terms of CDL, or I don't really completely understand. But um, I spoke to his, like, person who was with him and, and they said that they would um, be happy to speak with with us about that so I'll pass that information along um, but in terms of the, the credentials or like I guess you know with the Patterson accident he said absolutely not in terms of relaxing those sorts of requirements but he was open to other things so that was that um, update oh and then I have okay so that was that was delegate assembly then I wanted to also um, just mention to the board I sent you guys the press release but the Hillsborough Education Foundation is relaunching and very exciting news. Um, they will be giving out $10,000 to support local education for this year. Grant application will open up on Monday, December 2nd, and it's open to teachers, um, staff to um, basically apply for that grant program. Yeah, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your work on that. Um, yes, Lorraine. I just had a question. I'm not sure if, <clears throat> if Mr. Sweeney had addressed it. Um, in the patch article, it said that uh, it just indicated this last year of $536,000 that we lost. But I'm wondering if his legislation, if he had mentioned if his legislation would support retrospective versus prospective. Um, I don't recall him saying anything about retrospective. So it would just be future losses. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous until I see something signed well, by the governor. So, so um, I can. I'm not quite ready to spend the money. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But. And in fact, um, so I follow a couple different reporters on Twitter, and one of the reporters said, um, "Latest scoop: Governor Murphy said absolutely no to Sweeney's um, proposal." I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Um, so, Governor, Governor, um, sorry, Governor Murphy said absolutely no to um, Senator Sweeney's proposal about going above the 2% cap. He said that um, he would like to see state aid, sorry, um, um, the millionaire's tax and increase in sales tax before that. So, you know, it's going to go back and forth, basically. Yeah, I know. So it's exciting. And, you know, like I mentioned at the previous meeting at the um, uh, NJSBA legislative forum, mm -hmm. everybody was saying no way that there's going to be any ability to, you know, legislate <coughs> over a 2% cap. So it seems like there's a lot of back and forth going on. Everybody's going to play out their little agendas. And, yep. you know, hopefully we can do something here because the, the difficulty of being below our fair share and the difficulty of being um, cut the amount of money. We're going to have a big cut next year on top of what we've already gone through. 
and nothing's getting less expensive on the expense side. So uh, we do have a lot of budget challenges and uh, you know, it would be nice if we could get some help from the state. But as I said, until <laughs> it's signed, sealed and delivered, we can't, you know, we have to deal with where we're at right now. But again, if the public, uh, Dr. Antunis put something out, a letter to the state legislature, asking for support of our schools in terms of uh, whatever proposal, I mean, you know, exceeding the 2% cap uh, by the amount lost or by, God forbid, the amount that a school district determines is in the best interest of that district to, to, uh, to raise for education. Um, whatever it is, write your legislators, write Steve Sweeney, write to Craig Coughlin, write to the governor, and see if they can help us get through the situation we're in. Because we're in a unique situation. I mean, it's great that a lot of districts pass the resolution, um, but a lot of those districts aren't increasing their enrollment and a lot of them have different amounts of losses. Some of them, you know, didn't even bother to go out for a referendum. Um, and, you know, it's nice that everybody's working together on this stuff, but there are a lot of different scenarios that, you know, our district seems to be somewhat unique. So, um, with that, um, are there any other comments from the board? Nope, nothing from the public. <laughs> okay. All right. With that, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Any, any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a very happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Be safe, be careful, and uh, enjoy the things that you have to be thankful for. Bye-bye. <laughs>